Good morning and welcome to this week's IGTV. Today I'm talking about trying to get your teen up for school. Why is waking them up such an epic battle? Every single morning you're going in and you're waking them up over and over and over just to drag their sorry, tired arses <coughs> excuse me, out the door and into the car on time so that they actually might get to school, which they don't give a crap about either. And what are we gonna do to change the pattern this year so you and your teen don't need to constantly be at these resentful, angry odds and you don't have to always feel so exhausted and maybe just a little more respected. Okay, if waking your teen up in the morning for school is an epic, epic battle, then you are in the right place because I'm gonna unpack that this morning and I'm gonna give you some powerful tips that actually do work, shockingly enough. My name is Ali Payne. I am a certified life coach, a certified relationship systems coach, one of only 70 people in Canada to hold both designations. I am a parent of two now young adults who were teenagers. I was also an extremely troubled teen uh, myself. I did all of the things that you can possibly mean. I did them all. Um, and I have helped thousands of parents to end this exhausting and painful battle to, um, through, through emotional blowups and the resentment to set boundaries, to, set, um, to have relationships based on mutual respect and trust. You deserve that and they deserve that. So let's dive in, shall we? Okay, so your teen is not getting up on time for school. And it's, it's like an everyday thing, like school is approaching, whether maybe you're in the United States, school's already back in, maybe you're in Canada, school's starting today or next week, and you can already feel your shoulders going up to your ears and your like teeth are starting to clench and you're like, ding, 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 here we go again, here we go again. So unfortunately, if this has been a pattern for you and your teen, your stress level, like you might've had a summer off and away from school, but your stress is literally just simmering under the surface. Like we can put a summer smile on that because you, it's like oh, you can avoid it. You just don't have to pay attention to it. And that's okay. We all like would rather avoid the habitual stuff that we don't want to deal with. Totally get that. Um, but now it's back. So um, as far as waking your teen up for school, um, this becomes something that your teen doesn't love either. I know, that seems like super shocking. They don't love it either. It's happening. We need to talk about why it's happening though. Like, well, okay, so let's go over the problem. So so every morning, like, or maybe at night, tell me if this sounds familiar. So you, you, you tell your teen, like, you've got to get up on time. You've got to get up on time. I'm leaving the house at 6.45, 7.45, 7.20, whatever. I'm leaving the driveway at this time, or maybe maybe you have a carpool and they're coming to get them, and you're constantly trying to not hold up that carpool, or that carpool is always mad at your child because they won't get up on time. And then they get to school, they're half disheveled, like maybe still wearing their pajamas because that's cool these days, I don't know. Um, but they're not like awake for school and you're exhausted, now maybe you are late for work, whether you work from home or you work outside the house, now maybe you're late for work because you ended up either having to go to work and come back and get them or, or you waited for them because they, weren't, they didn't have breakfast, now they don't have their backpack. I am stressed out just describing this and I know that you go through this regularly. So and we've gotta turn this around, we gotta turn it around. This isn't normal, it's not healthy. Well, I should, should let, let me just, wow, back that up, Allie. I'm not saying it's not normal. Um, I'm saying it's not healthy. It's not healthy and this doesn't need to be this way. I think that's what I should have said. So pardon me, that was that was not fair, that this isn't normal. It's not healthy, it's not healthy for you and it's for your mental health, it's not healthy for your teen either. Okay, so here's, let's talk about a couple reasons why this is happening, okay? So first of all, your teenager's circadian rhythm, um, like their natural, time kind of time shifting between the waking hours to the sleeping hours which is this circadian rhythm is like a normal thing that goes on in our bodies when our bodies go from wake state 
and transition into sleep state, okay? So our body temperature tends to rise. Um, we have a hormone in us called melatonin um, that rises. Um, our blood pressure goes a little bit lower, like our heart rate starts to slow a little bit. All the things that tell your body and your brain, hey, it's time to transition from, from awake state to sleep state. So in your circadian rhythm for children, so a, a child who has not yet gone through puberty or started puberty, they might go to bed at like, say, nine o'clock. I'm just giving an example, okay? They might go to bed uh, at nine o'clock and maybe they're like asleep by 9.30, okay? And then they wake up. Their wake cycle, which is when your cortisol is actually highest in the body, um, your blood pressure starts to pick up, your heart rate picks up, your respiration picks up, um, and then you go back into a wake cycle. And, and that might be 6 a.m., 7 a.m., something, something around that, okay? Now, when your teenager's brain hits puberty and they get completely hijacked by, by hormones, there's a number of things that go on. I'm not gonna go into all of those in detail, but I'm gonna talk about the circadian rhythm. So because of the hormonal development and massive hormonal changes that are going on in their brain, their circadian rhythm flips up to two hours later, two hours. So it means that it is harder for them to get to sleep. Let's say they went to sleep, I'm just gonna stick with this example. Let's say they went to sleep at nine to 9.30, now, they're barely getting to sleep or they just don't feel tired until like 11 to 11.30. And if you're a parent and you're at the stage where your teenager now goes to sleep or goes to bed after you do, you know what I'm talking about. Cause you're like, I can't stay awake any longer. I need to go to sleep. I'm exhausted. I need you to go to sleep. But your teen's like, yeah, but I'm not tired at 10.30, uh, 11. I'm like, I'm not tired. It's not so much that they're being like disrespectful, they're being defiant, it's that this is a real thing. Now, the back end of this going to bed two hours later, for the adolescent brain, it is so hard for them to get up on time. They're exhausted and they're exhausted a lot. That's normal. It is normal because, again, of the massive brain renovation that's going on inside of them. And you're like, Ali, my teenager literally does nothing but park themselves on the couch and play video games all day. I, there's no way they can be exhausted. Actually, it's true. They are growing physically. They are, even if it's not like growing uh, in height, they are, their cells are changing. They are massively renovating and their mental exhaustion is way higher because of during the adolescent years, their brain becomes a very inefficient computing system, not unintelligent, just inefficient. And so it's exhausting everything. So they need a lot more rest. So now it becomes even harder for them to wake up at 6 a.m., 6.30, whatever the, the wake up time is for your teenager in order for them to get to school on time, whatever that looks like, okay? So now you have a child who, um, is can't get to sleep until up to two hours later, and now they're still having to get up on the same time, I'd be exhausted too, wouldn't you? Like I'd be exhausted if I was staying up two hours later, but I had to keep getting up at the same time. Unfortunately, our schools around the world are very, very slow to hit this science that's been available for decades to move the start time for junior and senior high schools later to like nine, 9.30, which suits the adolescent brain better. And the research on those schools that have done that, the success rates across the board have been very positive for every team because it acknowledges that the physiological, scientifically proven, changes in the adolescent brain and it works better for them. Um, now, if you're in a school district where the start time is still 8 a.m. or you know just after eight and they still have to get up at 6.30, there's nothing you can do about that. I'm just telling you. Well, I suppose you could like get on the PTA or call the school board, I don't know, whatever. I think there's always change we can make. But school start time becomes more and more challenging because now they're that much more tired. Now excuse me, aside from getting up from school, I just, a little side note, 
your teen does need a lot more sleep. They need a lot more nothing time, a lot more rest and a lot more sleep. So on the weekends, are they sleeping until noon? Yeah. Do they need to? Yeah, they do. They just need more rest and more sleep. Now, let's go back to the problem at hand, okay? The getting them up for school on time. So what also happens now that we are in the era of technology and most teenagers have a phone or um, a tablet or something in their room is unfortunately because their, their brain naturally is not ready for sleep until 11 or, or 12, whatever, they're spending more time on their phones. This blue light from a device, from a tablet, from a, from a, um, a phone is stimulating to the brain, let alone if they're actually doing things on social media um, and or YouTube or whatever, and that is stimulating to the brain. And so the brain is like, oh, we need to stay awake. We need to stay awake. So it actually is like interrupting the natural sleep cycle and now it's throwing adrenaline in there. That's like a shot of espresso because it's throwing adrenaline in them because it's overriding the natural transition between wake and sleep. And now often teenagers will say, but I can't get to sleep until one or 2 a.m. Yeah, that's probably true. It probably is true because your brain, you overrode the natural sleep cycle. And so now your brain um, is got shots of adrenaline in it and it takes a, a, an hour or two to metabolize all of that adrenaline so that your brain can go back, your brain and body can go back into a natural rest state. Um, now, a lot of adults do this, so let's not be throwing shade on our teens. How many adults stay up later than what you know you should and then you go to sleep and you have a hard time getting to sleep? Our rest stage as we get older, our sleep stage actually backs up, backs up like an hour or two but you're probably used to overriding it. I did it for years, for years I did this to myself. I overrode my own natural rest sleep cycle and then I'd go to bed at 11 and I couldn't figure out why I was so wound up and I couldn't sleep. Well, I'd been on my phone for one. Number two, I'd gone past my natural transition which was backing up earlier and I wasn't okay with it. So I just like overrode that. Now that didn't work. Okay, so that's one of the reasons that it's happening and why it is so hard to get your teen out of bed in the morning. Now, um, if you're like most parents, it's like, but you need to go to school. You need to go to school. And if you don't go to school, a couple things are gonna happen. Number one, you're going to fail because you're not going to school. And you who hails to the no will not be doing that on my watch because I'm a good parent and you are gonna get your sorry butt into school. Number two, teenagers don't care about school because it's just not relevant to them right now. There's so many things that are broken about the school system. It's not, it's not set up right now to support teachers or students. So you got two things going on. Number one, they're so tired, they literally cannot wake up. Number two, they don't care about waking up anyway, okay? And then you as a parent, uh, depending on where you live, you might deal with truancy, right? And so now you've, you, if they sleep in, you're gonna be paying fines or be put in front of a judge because of truancy, because they've been late so many times. Unfortunately, although the truancy laws are addressing certain ways of thinking about school and certain behaviors. The truancy laws are also not supporting the adolescent brain development and the fact that again, scientifically, they just are not morning people. Like they find it's really a struggle. So what happens for you is that you end up approaching this and saying, well, what do I do? Just let them fail. What do I do? Just like let them be late. If I let them sleep in alley, they will never go to school because they don't care and they're going to fail. Maybe, maybe. So you are now taking responsibility for them waking up every morning. You're taking full responsibility for them waking up every morning to avoid two things, possible truancy fines, and or both, they don't fail school. Because if you don't wake them up, they'll never get up. Well, maybe, 
Maybe. Your fear of being judged by the school, and I know that happens, getting the emails home from school, being judged by the teachers, being just plain judged as a crappy parent, lazy parent, obviously, because you have a lazy kid who won't get up for school. And the fact that you as a parent might have a child who fails some classes and what that might say about you as a parent. You have taken responsibility for their job out of fear, fear of your own value and worth as a parent and a human, which is not a question, by the way. Not here, it's not. Fear of your projection and the catastrophizing of what happens if they don't wake up for school. The fear of what might happen drives you the fear of them failing drives you to continue waking them up and going through this freaking exhausting cycle every single day. Your thinking, your, your fear-based beliefs are what are driving, are perpetuating this. You see, I, the biggest lie, the biggest lie in my teen won't get up for school is that somehow, if you don't do this for them, everything's gonna fall apart. The biggest lie is that it was your job in the first place. Your teenager will not take responsibility for waking up on time if they never have to. And if you are continually waking them up every morning, why would they have to take responsibility for that? I know you're like, Allie, I tell them every single morning, you've got to get up for school every night. Do you have your alarm set? You've got to get up for school. This is exhausting. I can't be, keep being late for work. You keep holding up the bus. You miss the bus and I have to come home and get you. You keep holding up the carpool. Blah, 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 blah. That's what your teenager hears because what you're doing is waking them up for school. So your words don't match your actions. There is zero consequence to your teenager for not getting up for school because you are making sure there is no consequence based on your own fear of what might happen. The only way to turn this cycle around is to allow your teenager lovingly and compassionately to experience some natural consequence where you are not rescuing them from those consequences and you are not their backstop. You see, in order for our teen to create healthy coping strategies to live a somewhat successful independent life, they need to create their own strategies. And in doing that, they're probably gonna get it wrong a lot. They're gonna fail. They're gonna get it wrong. They're gonna struggle as they're building their own personal healthy coping strategies to become a, an independent adult. Their success strategy for getting up on time for school is currently you. You are their success strategy. So why are they gonna change? Why would they change? All of the nagging, reminding, exhausting, the consequencing, the I can't keep doing this, it's all hot air, my sweet, dear, caring and courageous parent. It's all hot air because when it comes, when push comes to shove, every morning, you're going back in their room 10, 20 times, whatever it takes. So why would they change their behavior? They don't need to. And this is why your teen is not going to get up for school because they're not being taught they need to take responsibility for it because your behavior keeps them not having to take responsibility for it. Now, I have no shame and judgment about you. I know you're doing your absolute best because you care about that child of yours so much as you might really struggle with them right now. 
In order for your teenager to get up to school, you need to explain to them that you love them enough. They are becoming an adult and you are going to treat them as an adult in training. And that means you will no longer be waking them up for school. What is their strategy going to be to wake up for school? Is it more alarm clocks? A lot of teenagers sleep like absolute rocks. They literally sleep like a rock. Like you could almost put a bomb next beside them and they won't wake up. What is their strategies for getting up on time? Because you are no longer going to be that strategy. It's time to hand this back to them, which was always theirs. Okay. In order for them to create a healthy strategy, they're going to need support with, first of all, one thing, and it's usually technology. Of course, they're going to want to be on technology late at night. Of course, they're going to. So the way you can support them is to cut off access to Wi-Fi or certain apps by 11 or 12 at night so that their the blue light doesn't keep engaging them or maybe they only have access to calming or meditation apps or music but not YouTube um, like Spotify or, or something Apple music whatever something like that so that they have something that can help them to wind down now a lot of teenagers I know tell me that they get really anxious at night which is also very common because your intellectual brain, your filter is trying to go to sleep because it's freaking tired. So your amygdala, the emotional has no breaks and it goes and then we get anxiety. Now that doesn't mean that you stay on social media. That doesn't mean you do more gaming. It doesn't mean you avoid going to sleep. It means that you build healthy sleep habits, sleep hygiene it's called by creating better um, calming exercises, stretching, breathing, using calming apps, um, to lead you through exercises, etc., so that you can begin to get that natural sleep transition going. That's one way you're probably going to need to support them is by limiting that. Are they going to love it? No. Are you going to do it in a way that is super cruel and cutting and mean and nasty? No. But if you say to them, it is my responsibility to help you take responsibility for getting up in the morning. And the best way to get up in the morning on time is to go to sleep on time. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, it'd be nice for them to have eight hours sleep. You know, the teenage brain actually needs eight to 10 hours sleep, but on a school night, because of the way that school time starts, most teenagers are getting less than eight hours sleep on a weeknight, which isn't good for their brains. Um, but that is, that is un unfortunate. Um, most teenagers also unfortunately get on chats at like 10, 11 at night. I know this was a big thing with my son. He's like, but all my friends start talking at about 10 o'clock and I'm like, okay, how can we have you participate in that in a way that's healthy? So we would, you know, as he became older, we were like, okay, well, we'll turn off the internet at 11 so you can have that time with your friends and be part of that social connection. Um, be part of a group, the inside jokes, all that stuff excuse me, all that stuff, but then the internet's going off. Um, and, and, you know, we had to try and find that balance somewhere, right? However, let's talk about the waking up because this is where it's going to take a lot more from you. For you to stop yourself, for you to say to them, okay, maybe, you, you know what it actually helps to have an alarm clock on the other side of the room? Like that's a thing, those kind of clocks that roll off your, uh, roll off the desk and go off on the separate side of the room, they're a thing. You know why? Because when you have to move your body, when you have to get your body up to go turn it off, you get more adrenaline going. So you start to wake your brain and your body up because you've had to get up out of that cozy cocoon you created and actually go do something. That's how we wake up. Otherwise, what do we do? Hit the snooze button. Hit the snooze button, right? Come on, we all do it. Um, so they need to how you, your job is to help them create healthy strategies to take this ownership of what has always been theirs called getting up for school and make it theirs again. Now you can say, okay, I will go come in and wake you up, um, twice, not 10 or 20 times. Like I've been doing hails to the no, sorry. No, no, no. I will come in twice. I'm going to come at this time and this time or better yet, which I recommend, go in once, one time, and that is it. And you agree with what that looks like. I'm gonna throw your covers off. I'm gonna push you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep rocking you until you open your eyes and you say, okay. And that's the only time I'm coming in. 
and you need to restrain yourself because the minute you go in and you rescue them from taking ownership of this habit, you are part of the problem, my sweet, dear, caring, courageous parent. They're going to get it wrong. They're going to fail. And it'll get longer and worse the more that you keep rescuing them. But they're gonna fail. What do I do, just let them fail? Well, they'll sleep anyway, they don't care about school. Listen, they will get there, but not by you criticizing them through this, by you loving them through this, by encouraging them. I know this is hard. I know waking up in the morning is super hard, super, super hard for you. I believe in you. So if you currently drive your, teen your teenager to school, you're gonna let them know at exactly what time your ignition is starting and you are leaving the driveway not coming back, leaving the driveway. They're, they're not going to make it the first couple times, but you need to keep your word because when you don't keep your word, your teenager has no reason to change again. So you tell them what time you're leaving the driveway. If they are in that car or not in that car, that's an issue. All of your nervousness and your worked up and your fear-based beliefs and the catastrophizing, now they're gonna fail school and all the horrible things and you get yourself off to work. And if they do not get to school on time, guess whose responsibility is to call themselves in late? Why? And to get any homework that was missed. Whose responsibility might that be? Theirs. Theirs. If there is a carpool coming and they are always holding up the carpool, you tell that carpool, you may be in front of my house at any time you wanna be in front of my house, but you will be leaving the front of my house at this time with or without my child. And I need your buy-in while I support and love my child to take ownership of that which has always been theirs because I am releasing control over this. And I'm going to learn how to be with my own fear so that I don't keep perpetuating an exhausting cycle that is disabling their brain from learning a new skill. We as parents do this all the time. Our own fear and discomfort with our teenager getting something wrong or failing even for once or twice because of what people might think of you, what people might think of you, actually disables your teenager's brain from learning ownership and responsibility of a new skill. They must, do, that's actually a part of learning, struggle and failure, is that like a healthy part of learning? Now, if they miss the bus, you're like, okay, well, the bus is coming at this time. The bus is leaving at this time. I will not be rescued. I will not be coming home from work to get you, to get you to school if you miss. No, because who's calling themselves in late? You are. Who's going to get the work that you missed? You are. And then every day, you got to keep revisiting. Let's talk about the strategy. What's working? What's not? How can I support you without doing it for you? Okay. And I have parents who, I have hundreds of parents who have used these tools that I, that I, my proven system to getting your teen to take ownership and responsibility while you set boundaries around what is yours and what is not yours. And I've even had parents who have let, who have allowed their teenager to be late enough times. The teenager has had to go and stand in front of the truancy, the, the court, the judge, and that parent has helped their teenager understand what the fine's going to be and how they are going to earn that money to pay it. And those children don't end up feeling shamed and shit on. Yeah, it's a struggle, but they have been loved through the process, not criticized and condemned for not being perfect or getting it wrong, because that also supersedes and, and disables their brain from learning a healthy new habit. Do you remember when they learned how to walk? Did they get that perfect the first time? Did your, t did your child just get up and walk? You know, at about a year old, did they? Uh, no, they probably got it wrong so many times they had a black eye and maybe stitches and a giant gawk on their head because they got it wrong so many times. Their brain was getting feedback. Their brain was getting feedback on how to move their body such that they did not crash so many times. That is a negative feedback loop. It hurt them sometimes, 
but that was how their brain learned to master the skill of walking. And what did you do every single time they failed and got it wrong? What did you do? I'm going to bet you didn't go up to your toddler and say, oh, I can't believe you got it wrong again. That's it. You're never walking. You sit on your butt and you are just not, you are a failure. I am so embarrassed. I can't even believe it. Did you do that? No, you probably went to them, dusted them off, picked up their gorgeous chubby little hands, kissed them on the cheek and said, you got this. Give it again. Try again. So why is this different? That is actually how the brain learns in a loving, safe and encouraging environment that does not rescue them from the consequences. Getting up for school on time is the same thing. It is not about you and you being perceived as a good parent because I already know you are. I don't care what anybody else tells you. You already are. Your teenager needs to take responsibility and they will only do that. They will only change their behavior if your behavior changes first. These are what a couple parents told me when they used my proven system to change this cycle, annoying and exhausting cycle with their teenager. I've posted this before, but trying to get your child up for school when they don't want to go is a very frustrating battle that's hard to win. I tried up to the 11th grade and my son with my son and it did not succeed. This year I decided to stop. I told him he was in control using Ali's tools and I said nothing but was encouraging. This is the very first year he's getting up himself and going to school. Why? Because I stopped helping and being involved. I let him get in his own life and drive. Are things perfect? No, not at all. But the chronic mourning, frustration and resentment has been solved. You're not alone. Here is what another parent said to me. Her daughter didn't get up in time for school and she was feeling really frustrated because how, like, how are you supposed to wake them up, right? So I went about my business and about an hour later, I checked in and she was up. I didn't make a big deal about it. She came downstairs dressed and so she did not go into condemnation and criticism. It's just, this is her daughter's choice. You're gonna get it right, you're gonna get it wrong, whatever. About an hour later, I checked in and she was up. I didn't make a big deal and she came downstairs dressed and ready to leave and said, hey, I said, hey, I noticed you overslept. Did you have a bad night? Did you wanna talk about it? Empathy, so curiosity and compassion, not condemnation and criticism. Guess what her daughter said? She actually told her what happened. She was having a really bad night and she was obsessing over photos of her recently ex-boyfriend, a relationship that had broken up and was crying until 1 a.m. And that's why she was late for school. This mama didn't lecture, she listened, gave her a hug and sent her off to school late. And the daughter took ownership of why she was late, marked herself late and, and did whatever thing needed to be done. This whole getting up in the morning thing can be resolved very simply using my proven powerful tools. If you are ready for a change in your relationship with your teen and this school year is not going to be the death of you or the death of your relationship and the eroding respect and connection, instead you build mutual respect for you and your time and for your teenager being the intelligent, capable person that they are, then I, once I get this posted, I'm going to post this on to, AD, uh, to um, Instagram and YouTube. Um, once you get this posted, I'd like you to type respect in the comments below and I will absolutely get you quick access to my free proven framework to make this change with you and your team. I believe in you and you can do this. Thanks for joining everybody.